I, I, lo I love that song because it says, uh, he has done great things. Have you ever taken out a moment just to think about what great things God has done for you? No, just, no I want you to just take a, just a moment before we proceed forward that it does not matter how challenging life may be at this moment, God has done great things for you. I got one good hand clap over here, a few amens over here. Have you thought about the great things that God has done for you? Listen, I'm just like most of you. I'm not where I want to be or would like to be. I don't have all that I would like to have. But I have to always acknowledge that God has done great things. And, and can I be honest with you? The old folks said like this, if God doesn't do anything else for me, he's done more than enough. Amen. Come on, lift your hands and say, Father, you've done more than enough for me. Come on, lift your hands and say, Father, you've done more than enough. One more time, say, Father, you've done more than enough. When, when you begin to, I need to get this more volume, a different microphone. When you begin to show God that you're grateful, I know that God just continues to bless you the more grateful you are. Amen. And I am just grateful this morning that God has been been more than enough to me. Amen. And, uh, Tundra, I want to pray for you before you leave. She lost her, her brother, I think a little more than a week ago. We want to pray for her. Amen. Um, you know, it's not easy losing a loved one. Um, secondly, I want to say this. Next week's going to be super exciting. And I think... Uh, and I'm, I'm gonna, we're going to talk about it, but, but uh, Caleb said it best. Uh, it's about saving souls. Uh, I don't want one family member I have to die and go to hell. Not one. Amen. Next week we're going to have, you know, you know, special music and I think of the 9 a.m. service and then at 11:30 the choir and. All types of children's activity, games and floats and prizes, all that wonderful stuff that we do. Resurrection is a celebration. And you're celebrating his resurrection. And I don't want to get into my sermon on that for next Sunday, but, but it's a celebration. And we're going to be talking about it that Sunday. It's our time to rise. Amen. Come on. Come on. Come on, just, just, just touch the neighbor, say, say neighbor, yeah. just in case you don't know, yeah. it's your time, yeah. it's my time, yeah. it's our time yeah. to rise. Yeah. And so you, you listen, you, 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 you want to be here next Sunday, I want to thank God for our team, Ms. Edwards, uh, Lisa, she's all our team, uh, they put a little skit on for you this morning because we're serious about you uh, reaching those who do not know Jesus Christ. Amen? Well, let's, let's, let's pray, and uh, we'll look at John 4. Now, I need you guys to help me this morning. I'm going to let you go early this morning today. And so, two exciting services. Um, and when I finish, uh, Minister Williams is going to come. Where's Brittany? I saw Brittany earlier. And Brittany's going to come, and they're going to pray over the families for next week. Amen. Because uh, everybody, we're praying that you that you got people that you're going to bring with you next week. Amen. It's got two, two services. And like this service is full now, we want both services to be filled. So you bring all your people, uh, whatever service they want to come to. That's, next week is not about you, it's about them. Amen. So if you got to go to a service different than you normally do, you do that so that you can get somebody to Jesus Christ. Amen. If you got to do both like 
in our leader's will, you do that. Amen. What are you willing to do to make certain a soul is saved? Amen. So John chapter 4, really quickly. And y'all missed men's meeting yesterday, brother. Y'all missed the time. I tell you, God had Deacon Fitzpatrick walk in the door with a word yesterday. Amen. And I'm telling you, and brothers, y'all be at this upcoming Sunday, upcoming Saturday. And you know when the person coming with a word, you know that word is just for you? Yeah. That word yesterday was just for me. And I almost failed. I almost failed. Is Angelia? And I almost failed that word yesterday. And, uh, but thank you, Deacon Fitzpatrick, for letting God use you. Amen. Uh, it was I'll be quick to listen, slow to speak, and put anger in the back. And yesterday, I almost failed the test yesterday, but God helped me. Amen. In fact, I called Angela and I told her something was going to go down yesterday, and sure enough, it went down. And I let anger lead the way. And I remember that verse. Bring that back. And listen. Amen. Amen. Now, I did have to apologize, but I, but I didn't do what I normally would have done. What are you saying, Pastor? It's important. It's a start. Amen. God, wait a minute. God is working on me like he's working on you. Amen. God is working on me like he's working on you. So you're looking for a perfect church, it's the wrong one to come to. In fact, I can't help you find one. I can't help you because it don't exist. Because wherever there are people are, there's never perfection. Yeah, so, some of y'all looking at me like, what? Yeah. John chapter 4. We get this out of heaven. I need y'all to help me to read this morning if you can. I probably won't be long. John chapter 4. And beginning in verse number four, John four, beginning in verse number four. So I'm excited to see it. Our young people next week, uh, praise dance and uh, speeches. I love Easter speeches. Uh, Easter baskets coming, all that good stuff. Listen, you know, you have children. Make you, make certain your children participate. Amen. 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 Boys, one of those Sundays I hate them on camera. It's hard to pastor when I'm on camera. God Almighty, Jesus Christ. We love y'all, praise the Lord, you know. So I gotta take your family business and you don't want, you know. But you, you want, make certain your children are part of what the church is doing. If you train them up, up the way they should go, when they're old, they won't depart from there. Every child, you know, they have some additional rehearsals this week, but Make certain your children are there and a part of it. Amen. Uh, we need every voice ready to, to go and sing this week. Uh, stop sitting down on God's gift. One Sunday we're asking you to sing, and you, come on, talk to me, somebody. Call a choir member this morning, and they sleep. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let me just go ahead. Praise the Lord. I just... But, uh, well, amen, I, I'm trying to, you know, certain things I can't say on that camera, but John chapter 4, get this to have it. But you ought to be ready to come and worship and serve God. You know, I, I'd rather see little Johnny up here than have to go down there on 701 San Jacinto and see him behind bars. Come up here. He said he didn't want to go, but you make him go to school. But the church, the only place you give him a choice is the option. And if you get in trouble, you may because I won't come down there. When I can see him now in the house of God. So get your children and grandchildren, get them in, involved. Come on, talk to me, somebody. John chapter 4. And so we have all kind of Easter uh, things ready for them. 
And then some of our adults, you ought to be a part of the praise dance. Amen. You drop it like it's hot everywhere else. Hey, come on, talk to me, somebody. You, you're, you're Chicago's. We had dreams. You had euphoria. But you come here, you act like you can't dance at all. Come on. Amen. Listen, what would happen if you would come here and drop it like it's hot? You know, give, you, you, you do a praise dance for God. Imagine the lives that will be impacted. But we get to church, we can't move. So stiff. Come on. Talk to me. But if everybody would come and do their part, what a difference we make. Amen. All right, I feel better now. Praise the Lord. John chapter 4, verse 4. And so I pray, uh, John 4, those who are watching, please forgive us today. John chapter 4, verse 4. I'm going to read the even verses, and I would like for you to read the odd verses up to verse uh, number 22. No, tw I'm sorry, 25. And there was already talking about this already today. So John 4, verses 4 through 26. And so I'll begin with the even numbers, and you, you guys will do the odd numbers. Let's do it in unison. Amen? Amen? All right. But he needed to go through Samaria. Well, that sounds good. Now, Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, sat thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift of God and who it, who it is who says to you, give me a drink, and you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as well as his sons and his livestock? But whoever, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst, but the water that I shall give him will become a fountain of water, springing up into everlasting life. Jesus said to her, go call your husband and come here. For you have had five husbands, and the one whom you now have is not your husband. In that you spoke truly. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worship on this mountain, and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is a place of, for place of worship one ought to worship. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship, for, for salvation is of the Jews. But God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Final verse, Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. Can you say amen? amen. Come on, clap your hands. Thank you all for that helping me reading. So, so we're, we're still talking about a, a vision-driven life, a vision-driven life. Our subtopic, a vision for the harvest, a vision for the harvest. Father, we love you. We thank you. We worship you. We bless you. We, 
We praise you. Thank you, God, for this time of fellowship around your word. God, I thank you for not only this season of resurrection that today is Palm Sunday. This is Passion Week. God, as we commemorate your death, burial, and resurrection. And God, you've called us to reach souls for you. That is our mission. That is the mission, the purpose for every man, woman, boy, and girl that named the name of the Lord. That is our purpose, our reason for existing. And God, help us, I pray, to reach our families, our friends, our loved ones, our neighbors, co-workers, the stranger. God, help us to reach people for you. God, your word says it is your desire that all men be saved. For you so love the world that you gave your only son for those who believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. God, help us to be better uh, uh, disciples. Help us to be better harvesters. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. You may be seated. We want to pick up where we left off on last week a vision for uh, the harvest and this is a very lengthy text very lengthy passage uh, but we discovered last week and so we're, we're last week we started at verse 27 we started at the end and now we're going to go back and look at the beginning but here's what we discovered in John chapter 4 that it is our mission as a church uh, as a Christian it is your mission it is your purpose to win those who do not know Jesus Christ uh, those who are unsaved those who are unchurched not in church those who are untaught those who are uncommitted, the Bible is clear in the New Testament, that is our reason for existing. In fact, Jesus says this, you'll only be, you'll only be satisfied or fulfilled in life if you fulfill this purpose. In other words, if you do God's will, you will be fulfilled. There is no greater fulfillment in life when you're operating in your purpose. And again, it doesn't matter your age, your gender, your race, your color. We have all been called by God to reach those who are lost. Amen. And I just believe that you ought to, first and foremost, you ought to want to reach your family. In fact, on the day of, day of Pentecost, as Peter is preaching, he says, this is for you and your children. This is for you and your family. What God has done in your life is not just for you. It is for you and your family. Boy, I'm about to preach myself happy. It's, it's, for, it's for you and your family. That, that, that's, 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 that's what this is for, for you and your family. So in John 4, we see Jesus give us this example of how to reach those who are lost, those who are not a part of the fellowship. And so thank God for his example. The Bible says that he that winneth souls is wise. Uh, it takes wisdom to win souls. Some, some people can't win people to Christ because they lack wisdom. Amen. But, but it takes wisdom to bring people to Christ. Uh, here in John 4, and I want you to get this today. Here in John 4, Jesus had a need, he was hungry. And we know this through several passages because 
disciples went to the city to buy food for him. They left him there uh, in Samaria and went to buy food for him. And, and I, I want to say this, and I want to say this, uh, and if you're going to win the loss, there are times that you have to put the needs of others before your own needs. That's why folk can't shout this morning because if I was talking about how to have peace, that we would flip in the house. Right? But, but, but Jesus shows us here that we have to put the needs of others before our own needs if we're going to win those who do not know him. So, so by, by the time it gets to verse 4, uh, the Bible says that, that Jesus needed to go through Samaria. And here's my first point. I want you to look at this. Uh, uh, I call it a su surprise conversation. Write it down. A surprise conversation. Uh, uh, Jesus is there, in, in, there in, in Samaria there. He's there by the, by the well and it's about 6 p.m. And uh, here comes this woman to the well to draw water. And there's a whole lot of problems already because at 6 p.m., only the red light district women came out at this time. The red light district women? The Bissonette? Certain places on Montrose? See, y'all been saved too long. I, I, no, I, I'm convinced that some people, no, no, and I'm going to show you, that's one of the problems with a lot of Christians, you, you've been saved so long until you forgot. So at 6 p.m., these women showed up at the well. And he being a teacher, rabbi, uh, he was not supposed to even be talking to women, yet alone this type of woman. Have I got a witness here? The situationship type woman. And Samaritans had no dealings with Jews had no dealings with Samaritans. In fact, she mentions that because they were half-breed. They were uh, half-Jew and half-Gentile. They were half-breed people, and there was a lot of racial tension. All kinds of issues were going on, all kinds. And so here comes this woman of the night at 6 p.m., and he says to her, give me some water. And the Bible says this woman was shocked. She, she was surprised. He says, she said, what are, you, what are you doing talking to me? Because, uh, uh, you know, Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. We, we, don't, we don't get down like that. And, and so here's the first point again. We have to have what I call a surprise conversation. Jesus only asked her about water in order to initiate a conversation. Y'all ain't got it yet. See, th th here's the problem with the church. We don't want to talk to people. We we we're, we're waiting on the world to talk to us. But Jesus shows us how to talk to the world. In fact, he was in Samaria. Remember now, Jews didn't even go in Samaria. Jesus goes where there are lost people. There are no lost people primarily in the church. You have to go to your Samaria with those who do not know Christ. And you have to start, you have to initiate the conversation. Look, look, it's right here in the text. Look at Jesus. He's talking to this woman of the night who we know had five husbands. And we're shacking up with a, a guy currently. A half-breed, an unbeliever. I mean, racial, the racial division, political. I mean, but look what he does. 
he, he picks up the phone and he initiates the conversation. When was the last time you picked up the phone and just called somebody in your family who you know not in church? But, but we're waiting for them to call us. And have you noticed you hadn't got that call yet? No, no, no. Have you noticed you hadn't got that call yet? Yet, Mama, uh, I want to go to church with you. Yet, have you noticed you hadn't gotten that call yet? But, but, but our problem is this: we're too busy judging the woman at the well. We, we, we're too busy saying I, I can't talk to her because I'm a rabbi. I, I can't talk to her because she's a woman of the night. I can't talk to her because she's been married five times. I can't talk to her because she is immoral. That's the one Jesus came for you to talk to. The Bible says he came to seek and to save that which was lost. He went to Samaria to seek those who are lost. It's our job. It's not their job to find us. It's our job to seek them out. But we, we're too holy now. We, 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 we know too much Bible that, that we can't pick up the phone and say, I, 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 I'm going to call. Your, your daughter may be struggling with, with, with lesbianism. Some with homosexuality, with drugs, new age. I, I don't know what people are struggling with. I, I don't know what people are struggling, but, but that should not stop you from having a simple conversation. Most Christians can't even talk when I get on the phone trying to go into tongues. Telling them you ain't this, you not that. They already know what they're not. God, I wish I had somebody. So the first thing he does, he gives this, this surprise conversation. He talks to, to, to this woman who was not expecting this call from Jesus, this Jewish rabbi. What would happen if we would pick up the phone and call? And what do we do with, with this call? We see, we, see, we see this surprise call. Secondly, here's what we see. Jesus ministers to, listen to me carefully, her spiritual need. She came there. He said, hey, can, can, I, can you give me something to drink? He did that just to start a conversation. That was it. That was the only reason he did that. And then he goes on to tell her, he says, he says to her, in verse number, I want to read this to you because I want you to get this. Verse 10, Jesus said to her, if you knew the gift of God and who, who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. She was talking about natural water. But he began to talk to her about spiritual water. See, the, the world don't need you to give them natural water. Stop focusing on the physical, the material, the mental, and the social. The thing the world needs most is the spiritual. Oh, God of man. The church is in the business of meeting spiritual needs. L listen, to, li <laughs> people, can, people, can, people can go get a, a new Range Rover without knowing God. All you got to do is just go to work. You don't, have, you don't have to have God to go get a new house. All you need is the right income and good credit. You can, buy, you can go buy a house. But the one thing that we have is this living water. Eternal. We have salvation. That's what they cannot get. That, that's that deep longing that the world has that they cannot quench this thirst. He tells us, he said, wait a minute. He said, he said listen, listen, the, the, water you, the water you have, you're you, you going to thirst again. 
But I have something to give you that's going to work on the inside and you will never thirst again. My God, I wish I had somebody. That's the one thing I can say today. I may not have houses and cars and mansions, but I have Jesus on the inside. And I'm telling you, Jesus is far greater than a house, a car on a hill and a boat on a lake. It's better than a husband or a wife. I'm telling you, I have eternal life. The old folks said it like this, this joy I have. The world didn't give it to me. The world can't take it away. You got something that the world needs. So he began to talk to her about something that she did, didn't have, but she needed. What she needed was salvation, joy, peace, life, eternal life. Oh, Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have life more abundantly. Every person you're going to talk to, they have a spiritual need that only God can satisfy. Dr dr drugs, let, 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 I don't care how much Jack Daniels you drink. I don't care how high it gets you. At some point, think, okay, one person to understand. I, I don't care. I don't care how high that meth take you. At some point, if you live, at some point. You got to come down. But, but he said, I'm going to put something on the inside of you. God, I wish I had somebody. If he was talking about the Holy Spirit. Boy, I can see Van, Vandela uh, Dorset now singing, singing that song. God will put something in you. And young people, that's what you need. You need God to do a work on the inside of you. Come and look at neighbor. Say, neighbor, I have something that the world doesn't have on the inside. And so he's addressing this spiritual need. And that's what you, with, with, with people, uh, after, you, after you, the special conversation, I, I got to address this spiritual need that, that they can't get anywhere else. And then we see the movement from the spiritual need. This is important. I call it special ministry. He goes on to tell her, and she struggled because she, she, she struggled with this information. She kept struggling with it. She wanted it. She said, hey, she said, in fact, she said at the end, she said, hey, uh, 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 give me this water. <laughs> when you start telling people, that, that, that you have something that they can't get anywhere else, they want that. Right. She said, man, give this to me. And then he gives, then he gives us a special ministry. He said, uh, go and tell your husband to, to, to come back here. She said, I, I, don't, I don't have a husband. He said, you know, you, you said it rightly, truly. He said, in fact, he said, you, you've had five and the one you have now is not yours. It's special ministry. <laughs> and why does, he, why does he do this? Really for two reasons. Because our sin reveals to us that we need a savior. See, if you don't know you're a sinner, you'll never understand you need a savior. I know people who need salvation just by their sin. <laughs> because there's no way you can be saved and you're living in sin. I don't care what you say about God. You can say whatever you want to say out of your mouth. A person that's really been born again is not going to continue to live in sin. And sin expresses, it reveals to me, hey, I need a savior. You, you can't stop whoring around because you ain't, you're not saved yet. Amen. But do they have some saved whores? Yes, they do. 
but at least they, try, at least they know it's wrong. See, a, a, a person who's trying to justify it, you may not be saved. But, but if you say, listen, I'm wrong when I'm trying to work on it, well, at least I can say you try to work out your soul salvation. I have a got a witness here. Y'all may not want to put this on, on the TV today. Amen. Sometimes I have to go tell Dylan to take that one down. Take it down. Take it down. But, 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 but this is special ministry. Listen to me carefully. He, he, he didn't, he was not judging her. He was not condemning her. He wanted to bring her to a place of salvation. And he wanted her to know that God was working in her life. And, and here's, here's one of the best ways you can do what Jesus did. You know, some people say, well, Pastor, I, I'm, not a, I'm not a prophet. Because she, she said, well, you, you, you got to be a prophet. There's no way you can know these things unless you, you're a prophet. So, Pastor, I'm not, I'm not a prophet. No, you, you, you're not a prophet. But let me tell you this. The Holy Spirit dwells on the inside of you. Amen. And let me tell you something. And one of the best ways to give special ministry is simply praying for a person who's in a sinful and or stressful situation that she's in, like she was in. And I found out sometimes, man, when I would just simply pray for people, their needs, the Holy Spirit would take over and let me say something to that person. I had no idea they was going through that. But, but even though I didn't know, God knew what they were going through. I wish I had somebody. In fact, that's the people who walked in this morning and something has already been said that they're going through. I have no personal knowledge at all, but the Holy Spirit knows exactly where you are. He knows exactly what you're going through. He knows exactly what you're facing. He already knows. And so one of the best things to do when you pick up the phone and you call someone or you have dinner with them as you get ready, ready, ready to, to, to talk to them, make certain you take our time to say, hey, can I, can I pray for you? Let me pray for you about this, that, and the other. Yeah, yeah. And when you pray, what are you doing? You're allowing God to come in and work on that individual. Amen. Notice, don't call or contact somebody trying to condemn them. The, 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 the church has this attitude, or we want to condemn everybody because they're not like us. How can they be like us? And they, listen, <laughs> worldly people do what worldly people do. Sinners do what sinners do. They sin. We, we, we want sinners to do what saved people do. It is literally impossible for a sinner to do what someone saved does because a sinner does not have God. Amen. When was the last, I'm, just asking, I'm just asking a question. When was the last time you, 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 you gave someone special ministry? When was the last time you, you picked up the phone and, and the call was not what you could get from them? Not, not how you can condemn them. Not how you can preach to them and correct them and, and tell them, baby, mama sure wish you was. And the more you say mama sure wish, they go the opposite way 10, 10, 10 miles faster. Instead of just saying, baby, you know what? Mama was thinking about you. I just called and see how you're doing. Oh, my mom doing so so. That's good. Babe, you don't mind? Can mama just pray with you for a moment? Then hang the pray, hang the phone up. Well, that's a different. That's a picture of love. That that says I care about you. Have I got a witness here? Have I got a witness here? Pastor, you don't want to go around so and so. They smoke and they cuss. That's where I want to be. Yeah, give, give me the smoker and the cusser. 
Well, y'all don't, don't want to hear the Bible. I just don't like all that. Listen, listen about Jesus ate with sinners. He went to their homes. And the religious people are the ones that criticized him. I'm almost done. I go one more point. But, 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 but Jesus provided special ministry. So they, they understand, now understand her, her sin, but understand that God was at work uh, in her life. When she heard, when she heard the prophecy, she said, man, this, this guy is different. <laughs> this guy different. He, he, he's got to be a prophet. He, he's different. He's not like everybody else. In fact, all the other men in my life, they're judging me because I've had five husbands. All the other women are talking about me because I've tried it five times and it hadn't worked. But, but this guy, something different about him. And the church, we should be different. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We should get a save and then say, okay, now we're going to teach you how to be married the right way, God's way. <laughs> so so we, we see this surprise conversation that initiated by Jesus Christ. Right? And then we see, secondly, he begins to address and meet her spiritual needs. Let people know what God can do in their life. Amen. 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 Stay away from the physical stuff, the natural. Talk about love. Talk about joy. Talk about, about peace. Talk about patience. Talk about long life. Talk about eternal life. Talk about the things that only God can give. Amen. Stuff you can't debate and dispute. They provide special ministry. Pray for them. Yeah. And finally, there has to be this um, sincere worship. Sincere worship. Um, when the woman now. You know, she may have been immoral, immoral, but she was religious. Not only was she religious, but she was intelligent. And we live in a, a culture today, a society today. Don't think that they're they're uh, irreligious or they lack intelligence. Don't think that they're not going to try to give you some pushback. Because she began to push back and say, hey, wait a minute. No, no, no. We, we, we got the right mountain over here. <laughs> what well, we worship, this is the right mountain we worship on. In fact, you know, uh, Jacob is our father. And notice what Jesus does and does not do. He doesn't get into all of this you know, uh, you know, push back, trying to argue. You know, and, and we get in an argument with people who are atheists, who don't believe like we believe, who worship differently. Hebrew Israelites, you know, the new the, the ancestor movement. I want to ask the people. Uh, I be want to ask people sometimes, you know, these ancestor worshipers, I want to tell them sometimes, that's amazing that Africans now, they're trying to get over here and know God. And we're trying to go back where, they leave, where they're trying to leave. Then I want to ask you, if your God was so powerful, y'all even know which way I'm going. No, no, if your God was so powerful, why your God didn't stop the Atlantic slave, slave trade? Well, it's quiet in this Baptist church. Amen. Amen. But you don't want to get into all that. Right. Witchcraft. Now, uh, uh, see, I'm not religious. I'm spiritual. Don't even, get, don't even go there. They don't even know what they're talking about. But don't waste your time. I'm Pan-African. You know. You know. 
Dr. Umar Johnson. Guys, don't get caught up trying to discuss and debate those things. The woman tried to pull Jesus into that. And look at how he masterfully addresses them. Take my seat. Uh, you know, I, I, I have church at home. <laughs> I would want to ask people, what Bible are you reading? Right. Yeah. Then they go tell me, well, 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 how do you know the Bible is true? Yeah. It, so guys, so, 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 there's sometimes you're going to run up against resistance right. Right. and you got to know how to handle that. Yes, yes, yes. See, and you're going to see one, one word of it here. But the, the Bible says this. Listen to me carefully. Why, why are you wasting your time? It says that the natural man receiveth not the things of God. Neither can he know them. Because they are spiritually discerned. You're wasting your time talking to somebody about God who don't know him. Right. That they can't understand what you're talking about because they don't know God. That's the Bible. There are things that people will never know because they simply don't know God. That's why the first thing God wants you to do first is know him. Paul says that I may know him. You go back, back and forth with people talking about, I'm, they, talking about I worship the universe. The most high, the creator. Allah. That stuff sounds good. Don't waste your time dealing with that stuff. Look at his neighbor, his neighbor, don't waste your time. But because they cannot understand. Look, look at this. I got to close here. You, you and John? I want y'all to look at this real quickly. Are you there? You and John 4? Verse 19, the woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Verse 20, our fathers worship on this mountain, and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place uh, where one ought to worship. Look at how Jesus responds to her on his worship issue, because they're worshiping two different gods, not the same. Jesus said to her, woman, he said, believe me, the hour is coming when you were neither on this mountain no, in Jerusalem, worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. No. You, you, you don't even know what you talking about your ancestors. You, you do not. You don't even know. All right, goodness. For we know that for we know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. Verse 23, look at this now. But the hour is coming, and now is. It's a, it, it brings us to the truth of what, what's, what's, what's important here. Uh, uh, but the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers, because we all been created by God to worship, but he, he makes a, a distinction because if there's a true worshiper, then also the counter that must mean there is a false worshiper. He was calling him a false worshiper without calling him a false worshiper. He said, when the true worshipers, because it's all, he said, hey, he said, this thing is all about worship, right? It's, it's, all, it's all about worship. It, it ain't about, uh, uh, about Jerusalem and, and this mountain, but it's about worship. And here's what he says about worship. All this is about worship. He said, but I was coming, now he is, when the true worshiper will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. He says, God is spirit. And that's one thing I think any, most all can, can, can agree. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Yeah. Notice what he, he does. He keeps pointing this woman to God. Y'all missed it. 
He ain't pointing to church or religion. He's pointing this woman to God. When you're witnessing, point people to God. Then the woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. And when he comes, he will tell us all things. Even the stuff you don't understand, you can't, comp you can't comprehend right now, that they can't understand with, their, with, with, with all this, with this, 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 this thinking. Uh, he says, uh, she did know when Messiah would come, then all things. And he says to her, he says, Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. The Messiah, watch this now, now, he knows all things. Watch it now. There's some things, guys, that you don't know. There are things about the Bible that I don't know. Yeah. I'm a pastor. I've been church all my life. Studied, educated, but I would never know all things. But do you know who does know all things? Yeah. See, I'm not afraid to tell people, well, you know what? I got to get back with you on, on that because I don't know. But, but I do know who, who knows. God knows all things. But here's what I do know, Sister so Thomas. Thomas said, wait in the back. You can be back there, Sister Thomas. Here's what I do know. That the Father is looking for true worshipers. I, I do know that God is a spirit. I do know that those who worship him must worship him in spirit uh, and in truth. Uh, that I do know. And the Father is looking and he's seeking for, for those kind of worshipers. Amen. That's why when you come to church, you ought to be worshiping. Amen. Why? Because God is, is always looking for worshipers. Amen. Do we have any worshipers in here this morning? That, that's, come on, you clap your hands. When, when I come to church, I come to, I come to worship God. In spirit and in truth, because I know the Father is looking for worshipers. Yeah. Sometimes you may be in a tight spot, but I dare you to start worshiping God. Yeah. God will zero in on you when you start to worship him. Yeah. And no matter where you are, no matter what you're going through, God knows how to bring you out if you learn how to worship him. Yeah. Come on, shout to I'm a worshiper. Yeah. Come on, say it like me. Say, I'm a worshiper. Yeah. Come on, stand on your feet. Come on, stand on your feet. We're going to pray for your families real quickly. Come on, Mr. Williams. Come on, Brittany. Give to the microphone real quickly. quickly. Stand, one stand on me here. Stand, one stand up here. One stand up there. Stand over there. Y'all stand over there. I'll, listen, there's some people right now. Here's the one while they... Well, Mr. Williams is going to pray two minutes for family. And Brittany going to pray two minutes for, for, for the stranger. For those God may bring you into contact with. It could be a stranger, it could be a neighbor, it could be a coworker. And while they're praying, I want you to call out every name that God brings to your mind and your heart. I want you to call it out loud. I want you to put that name, some would say put it in the atmosphere. I'm gonna go better. I'm gonna say, put it in God's hand. I ain't gonna just just somebody just put it out in the atmosphere. You're going, but no, no. You don't. Yeah, just put it out there in the atmosphere. No, no. I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna put it in God. And I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do some, a serious lesson on that because we're being deceived with all that kind of stuff. The world's trying to take us away from God. Call God the atmosphere. God not no, not an atmosphere. He is a spirit. God is eternal. He's the creator. He has no beginning. He has no end. God is self-existing. Let me ask you, if there's no God, who, who created the sun? Who created the moon? The stars and the sea, the dry land. Who created the galaxy? Who, who created it? It's, it's you know, uh, you, you always have to be, be crazy to think you gonna, how do you get something out of nothing? 
the, the first law in science you learn for every cause does effect. God is the first cause for everything. How can nothing produce something? How can a collision, a big bang, how can that produce life? That's why we, before God, God will, people, people say, well, this, well how do, uh, why people who, who are not saved, f first of all, God's going to judge you based on the knowledge he, that he's given you, that is creation. Because everybody had to look at something and say, well, uh, every creation demands that there is a creator. And secondly, he'll judge you based upon his word. I'm sorry, your, your, your consciousness, the law, he's written in your heart. Amen. Then thirdly, the Christ. No man will be without, the Bible says, without excuse. He's going to look at, creation should tell you he exists. Consciousness tells me he exists. That's how you know there's a difference between right and wrong. Because God had placed it in our heart, our consciousness. And then thirdly, and most importantly, the Christ. He is the proof that God exists. I wish I had somebody. Come on, let's, let's pray for family. Everybody, you start praying for family, and we got, you got two minutes, because I got to get out of here. Then you got the other, you, uh, him, you go two minutes. We're going to pray for just for strangers, for anybody. But go ahead, Mr. Ms. Williams, go ahead. Thank you, Father. Uh, call those names out while he's praying. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God, create opportunity to minister, God. Create opportunity to reach our family members, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for it now in the name of Jesus. God, go before us and make our way prosperous, God. Go before us and give us good success for every family, God. Every family. We call every family member saved now in the name of Jesus. We bless you today, God. We thank you, God. Open up their hearts. Open up their minds. Open up their ears, God, that they may be able to hear and receive, God, the, the, the invitation to you, Father. And we thank you for it now, God. We bless you, God. Every son, every daughter, God. Every boy, every girl. God, we thank you. They are saved now. In the name of Jesus. And God, we bless you today, God. We call it done and cannot be so any other way. In, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Come on, praise God for your family being saved. Come on, praise God for strangers, for neighbors. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Father Thank God, you, we want to uplift all of the people, Father God, who are lost, Father God, who are unchurched, who don't know you, Lord. We ask, Father God, that you put your hands on them, Father God, because you can do anything, Father God. There is nothing that Thank is you, Lord impossible Jesus. for you to do, Father God. Each and every one of our lives are on display, Father God, and it shows that the work in the mighty hand that you have on our lives, Father God. So we ask right now in the mighty name of Jesus that you touch, Father God. Thank touch you. those who need saving, Lord. Touch those who need salvation, Lord. Touch those who don't know you, Father God, and who may even want to know you, Father God, but just don't know how or what to do, yes, Father. Father God. We ask right now that you touch them, Lord. We ask, Father God, that you put people into their lives, Father God, that yes, will God. bring them to you, Lord. Yes, that as pastors say, that will not condemn, Father God. Yes, God. But to point them to you, Father yes, God. Yes, God. We all need you, Lord. We all, even the saved ones, Father God, we still need you, Father God, because we are nothing without you, Lord. We are nothing but filthy rags, Father God. We are nothing without you, Father God. And we don't take you for granted, Father God. So we just ask right now that you touch the people on the streets. Touch the homeless, Father God. Touch everyone, Father God, that is out of their mind, that is out of touch with you, Father God, and bring them to you, Lord. Yes, Father. Save us, Lord, from yes. our sins, Lord. Save us, Lord, from ourselves, Lord. Yes. Save us, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Bring them in by the drones, Lord, and allow us as a church family, Father God, to show love, Father God, to show the love that you have given to us, that you have spared us, Father God, in our sin, Father God, in our weaknesses, Father God, you have been there for us and you've never given up on us, Father God. So allow us to reciprocate that love 
to one another, Father God, and to others so that they may know you and to ask, what must I do to be saved? And I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Well, 